Welcome, age of vintage society. Frank Sinatra was notorious for the women, and they somehow ended up willingly on his bed. The delectable actress Elsa Martinelli was also another woman he had an affair with, but it seemed Sinatra wanted more. Did Elsa give that to him? Stick with us to find out. Elsa Martinelli, who dared to bear. What kind of photo shoots made her famous? I want you to know, my viewers, how much I appreciate you. Without your support, these videos wouldn't be possible. Thank you for those who hit the thanks button and for the Patreons. There is no discussion about Italian actresses in Hollywood that would be complete without mentioning the likes of the sexy Sophia Loren, the most beautiful Claudia Cardinale, and the diva Gina Lollobrigida. Of course, we didn't forget, there is the lean sex machine Elsa Martinelli, also known as the Italian Audrey Hepburn, who, interestingly, she was friends with. It was the perfect description of this lean actress. Like Audrey, she had a smouldering sex appeal with her thin body and luscious dark hair. She also was a tomboy and a non-conformist, and some say she was more sensual and more forceful. Martinelli had a stubborn streak to her. It was either her way or no way, no compromises. Just as Kirk Douglas. However, she and Audrey were two faces of the growing number of fiercely independent women. Europe had a way of churning out appealing actresses, and Elsa was so appealing that Gary Cooper drank champagne from her slipper, which we aren't certain is hygienic, and JFK liked her. Elsa was that much of an eye candy. But Elsa wasn't just a pretty fair and a pair of long-toned legs. She has got the talent to back it up. She walked the talk and rose from the initial challenges she faced. Elsa was a tough cookie, and the kind of role she got in films portrayed this, but she did the impossible. The sexy actress managed to escape typecast that was prominent in the movie industries of the world at the time. She could be elegant in one movie and be bawling her eyes out in the next. Everything was within her wide range. Testament to her range was her comedic brilliance in the film Donatella, directed by Mario Monicelli. The movie broke her out and made her become a sizzling, sensational up-and-comer filmmakers wanted to work with. The film was the classic tale of mistaken identity that was neatly done by the director and elegantly executed by Elsa, who won the Best Actress Award at the Berlin Film Festival for this film. She captured both audience and critics' attention with her portrayal of a secretary mistaken to be the heiress of a large fortune. Then she furthered her acting career with the drama Manuela, who was the titular character. Elsa's character hid on a tramp ship until she was discovered and her presence was objected to by Trevor Howard's character. Eventually, love conquered all. She showed she could take a role on the risque side too, Despite initial objections, she became a girl who works on the streets in Mauro Bolognini's La Notte Brava, or Night Heat. And the film may not be your cup of tea on account of how dark it was. At least it was better than Blood and Roses, which was supposed to be a horror film. Everyone, including Elsa, had an off day with the film. Elsa was supposed to be possessed by her ancestor in the film. She was supposed to strike fear in the heart of the audience, but it fell flat. The movie wasn't spooking anyone. It was that much unsatisfactory. Without Claude Renoir and his skilful camera work, it would have been a complete waste of time for those who watched it, but there was only so much the cameraman could do. So Elsa couldn't do horror, but she was a great action star with her involvement in many action films. In The Tenth Victim, she played Olga, the sexy gun-toting spurned mistress of Marcello Mastriani, who was the prey of the hunt. The film was a science fiction action film that was set in the future, where people with violent tendencies are given license to kill lawfully. The hunts were televised with corporations in a struggle for the advertisement slots. Martinelli proved that she could do almost anything with how she flawlessly executed her role, and she looked sexy doing it. Fans would not be quick to forget her sexy white clothing which cut out at the sides, letting the world have a peek at her delicious curves. Then there was the black gown with the white hem and the dangerous slit that exposed her attractive long legs. The movie tapped into the actress's sexiness. 
but that show of sexiness in the movie was mild compared to some of her other displays. For instance, there was the time she bathed nude on screen in one of her films, and there were those sultry photo shoots. Those photo shoots reinforced her reputation as a non-conformist. She bared skin when women were expected to cover up. She was one of the faces of the modern woman, a symbol of a rising new age. In one of her iconic shoots, she left little to the imagination. The sexy actress wore white and black panties with nothing else besides a wreath of flowers over her bosoms. Daring, isn't it? But that was Martinelli for you. She was bold and the master of her path. It was her boldness that helped her avoid being typecast. It was that attitude that fueled her performances in her other action film with a spy theme. The film was Morocco 7, a British crime thriller. Martinelli wasn't a spurned lover this time around, but a torn lover. Her character Claudia was part of a jewel heist crime group, and her boss was seeking to steal a priceless medallion out of Morocco. The group takes on a new member who turned out to be a spy, and Claudia knew but became torn between loyalty and love. Martinelli delivered the goods in this role. She made the audience feel what she felt. The sexy actress took the viewers on her journey of dilemma in an action-packed, suspense-filled film. Little wonder Elsa worked with the top-billed actors of the time. Her skills were just too great to ignore. She was with John Wayne in Hatari, where she was a wildlife photographer, and Wayne an animal trapper who captured animals alive. After initial hostilities, Wayne and Elsa's character warmed up to each other and ended up falling in love. Elsa's character also became a mother of three baby elephants. Yeah, the film wasn't her best work, but credit to Elsa for trying out a new type of role. She had to bond with elephants for real. She was committed to the film so much that she was already left for the set when the elephants were born and began feeding them. The animals saw her as their mum and followed her around. Also credit to the cinematography, Russell Harlan for his work with his skill in capturing the scenery and the animals. What he did was so amazing that the film almost won the Academy Award for Best Cinematography. The film trained Elsa for the movie, The VIPs. This time she worked alongside Robert Mitchum and Jack Hawkins as she played Hawkins' mistress. Well, Elsa didn't manage to escape typecasting completely as she also played Orson Welles' mistress in The Trial. In the movie she got to work with Richard Burton and the vivacious Elizabeth. John, Jack, Richard and Robert weren't the only top men she starred alongside. She was also the leading lady to Charlton Heston's leading man in the film The Pigeon That Took Rome, which was a war comedy about Charlton's character spying on Germans and trying to send the secrets he had discovered through a carrier pigeon. Elsa was a hard worker and she deserves all the flowers she got. Not many actresses can claim to have worked with top Hollywood men. Even those who were born in America could only admire these men from afar. The actress smashed boundaries and limits, but she wasn't always like that. In fact, she came from a humble beginning, far flung from the privileges of comfort. Yes, Elsa Martinelli wasn't always a diva. She slowly, through the glamour of her success, became one. Elsa Tia, or Elsa Martinelli, was born on 30th of January 1935 in Grosseto, Tuscany, to a poor family where she was one of eight children. The family moved to Rome when her father, Alfredo, got a job at the railway station. Her mother was a stay-at-home mum and a seamstress taking care of Elsa and her many siblings. The sexy actress began to work when she turned twelve to contribute to the family's finances. Martinelli delivered groceries when she was twelve and got work as an assistant in a millinery shop. Elsa helped weave beads into the hat of the aristocratic women in Rome. To supplement the money she made from those jobs, she took up barmaid jobs. However, her luck was about to change, and it all happened by chance. Martinelli was in a boutique when Roberto Capucci, an Italian fashion designer, saw her. You see, while Martinelli came from humble beginnings, her face and body weren't humble. The actress had the magnetic beauty of an aristocratic woman, and when Roberto began to fit her in fashion items for their modelling work, she transformed into a living art. The clothes fitted her body in a provocative manner, and the jewellery seemed to look better when she wore them. Her high cheekbones sat on her face, adding to her appeal and making men want to worship her. 
The Italian goddess began to appear in different fashion magazines and was the choice of designers all over Italy. At a young age, she had already become a fashion icon and an editor proposed that she travel to New York. Ambitious and daring, Elsa accepted this advice and little did she know what was waiting for her. Ford Agency snapped the actress up and soon the sultry star soon graced the cover of Life magazine. Then Hollywood came to meet her. It wasn't on Elsa's agenda that she should act in Hollywood, although she had gotten small roles in films back in Italy. However, the roles weren't ones she would drop her modelling for. She was a model, and that was that. But when Douglas Kirk's wife saw her picture, she told her husband that she had found a dark-haired woman who could play the role of an Indian. Kirk had been looking for an actress to play the role of an Anati, the child of an Indian chief. Elsa was to star alongside Kirk Douglas himself. The picture Douglas saw was that of a pretty lady coming out of the water, with her clothes clinging to her body, displaying her impressive figure. Kirk saw an exotic foreigner and was convinced she was the only person for the role of Anati. Douglas then set to work. He needed to convince the raven-haired beauty that she had to work for him. But Elsa said no. It was too good to be true. Elsa was sceptical, but Kirk was relentless. He was determined to have her in his film. So when he asked her how he could prove that he was the one, she told him to sing. But it wasn't just any song he had to sing. Douglas had to sing the song Ned the Sailor sang in the film, Twenty Thousand Leagues Under the Sea. Kirk had spent a lot of time trying to find Martinelli for him to give up now, so he sang like a canary. It was after he sang that Elsa was convinced. Douglas thought he already had her, but Elsa was as slippery as she was pretty. Anyway, I'm fine in New York, and I don't know if I want to come to Los Angeles, she said, crushing Kirk's dreams. However, all wasn't lost yet. Eventually, the actress relented. She signed a two-year deal with Douglas's production company, Briner Productions. She acted as a Nati in Indian fighter, where she treated the audience to brief on-screen nudity. Her performance was solid, but things suddenly went wrong. She and Kirk Douglas had a falling out. Kirk claimed that the actress was impatient and was all about the money. Elsa fired back that she wasn't focusing on the money, but it was Kirk who was the one thinking about money without a care for her. Kirk loaned out the star to Universal Pictures. The big shot studio cast her in their film, Four Girls in Town, which Martinelli described as horrible. So the actress moved back to Italy, turning down the opportunity to appear in Spartacus. Luckily, her career picked up, but you know all about her career and the type of film she acted in already. However, did you know that the actress married into royalty? And did you also know that there was a thing between her and Frank Sinatra? The actress confirmed in an interview that saying no to a relationship with Sinatra was one of her biggest regrets, but maybe one of the smartest things she had ever done. The two met when the actress was in Los Angeles in the 60s. Sinatra was Elsa's idol, and when the two met at a Hollywood party, one thing led to the other, and they passed the night together. Sinatra was just coming from his fourth failed marriage, while Elsa was in the process of leaving her first marriage. The talented singer asked Elsa to stay with him, but despite Frank being her idol, she flat out refused. No, thank you, she said. Her rejection was understandable. She hadn't yet finalised her divorce from Count Franco Macinelli, Scotty, her first husband. Her first marriage was always doomed to fail. The family of the Count, especially his mother, didn't like Elsa at all. When she and the Count got married, his mother expelled him from their palace. Perhaps the actress's glitterati lifestyle didn't appeal to the mother. The actress claimed that she didn't feel free when she was with the Count. This was ironic because the reason she rushed into marriage in the first instance was that she wanted to feel free. She was just tasting fame and had a lifestyle of partying. Settling down didn't appeal to her, and perhaps being a mother too, as she and the Count had a child, Christiana. Christiana would be her only daughter. It took years before her divorce from her first husband got finalised because, at that time, there was no divorce in Italy. So, when eventually they got divorced, she married sweetheart Willie Rizzo. This time, Elsa was ready for marriage. The glitterati lifestyle had reduced, at least according to her. She said she had lived with a photographer and later a furniture designer for so long 
that her inability to stay in place got reduced. It would appear that by her second marriage the actress had become much more mature and responsible. The actress and her second husband, Willie, lasted for as long as he was alive. They were until 2013, when he died. The actress slowly disappeared from the screen, tapping into other parts of her artistic talent. As her husband built a furniture designer career, she became an interior designer. The acting was something she did occasionally. At 82, the actress died. If you enjoyed learning about this iconic actress, don't miss our next video on how Katie Gerardo gave an orgasmic feeling to her audience. Click now to watch.